Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week five, day two of our study of Ephesians and Philippians. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. Welcome back to the 10 Week Bible Study. Again, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to jump back into Ephesians with you today. Before we do, let's pray before we start. Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God? Speak to us. Come touch us and fill our hearts with the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's Word. We'll be reading today from the NIV. This is Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 8. For once you were in darkness. No, for once you were darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Now this chapter, and and especially this passage, we could look at this and and see that Paul is saying, you need to do things to please God so that you can, you know, find favor with him and he'll he'll let you into his kingdom. He'll save you. There, There can be people that would look at this and say, it's really your works that save you. And this is justification for that. And Paul is saying no such thing. There is no such statement that Paul is making in this chapter. <clears throat> Paul is speaking specifically to believers. He is not speaking broadly to believers and non-believers. Find out what pleases the Lord so you can kind of come into the light and be the light. That's not at all what Paul is saying. Paul is saying is once you have given your life to Jesus, once you are in the fold of the redeemed, then find out what pleases the Lord. He's saying, once you were darkness, you were were surrounded, you were in this dark, you were part of the darkness that is is going to be judged by the Lord. And yesterday, I didn't mention, but we we saw that Paul said that the people who engage in all these things and teach other people to be engaged in darkness, the wrath of God is on them. The wrath of God. Of God is on them. So you and I, once before we accepted Jesus, God's wrath was on us. But now that we have accepted Jesus, we are children of the light. We belong in the light. We are now the light. God has made us the light. And so we don't want to engage in those acts of darkness. And again, that doesn't mean that we won't sin, but it also means that we won't allow anything. We won't allow ourselves to justify our sin. When we sin, we repent and we run back to the Lord. That is what it means to be in the light. And so Paul is encouraging us as these children of the light, find out the the acts of the light. Find out the things that light does. Find out what pleases the Lord and do those things. And they're not hard to find. They're not hard to discover when we give ourselves to a life of his word and prayer. The Lord leads us and guides us into all light when we give ourselves over to those things. Verse 11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything is exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is not a scientific thing that Paul is saying, but in, in a way, this is scientifically true because a light source is all like the reason we see is because a light source shines on something and then reflects back into our eyes. And so in that way, I suppose you could say that everything that we see does become a light. Light is reflecting off of that subject. Right now, there are lights in the studio bouncing off of me and then coming into the camera. And that is what the camera is seeing is, is it's not looking at the lights. It's looking at me and I become the light for this camera, for your eyes. And that's what Paul is saying is when we are in the light, we actually become part of that light. We can only see things with our eyes that are reflecting light, that are basically producing light toward us. 
And so when we come into that light, we become part of it. And we want to be part of that. We want to throw off every single thing that is darkness. And again, there is no one perfect in this life except Jesus. We will stumble. We will sin. But as believers, we don't make excuses for that. We repent and we run back to God. Again, that's what the Bible defines as righteousness. Righteousness would be defined as never sinning if that were possible for any of us. But we've seen over and over in scripture and we know just in our own lives that that isn't something that happens. But instead of trying to justify ourselves and try to to resolve that tension inside us that we all feel when we sin and going away from God, which is the darkness, we repent and we come back to God and we bring ourselves into that light. I think Paul here is talking about exposing the darkness with light. I think he's talking about in our lives. <laughs> I think most people would would look at, and I don't know about most people, but a lot of people would look at this and say, you know, we need to go and expose, you know, the darkness in other people and other people's lives. And I mean, sometimes the Bible makes it clear that we do need to do that. But I think overwhelmingly, the Bible testifies to that's not actually what we should be doing with most of our time. Even in in Ephesians here in, in Philippians, Paul is going to make it clear that don't stick your nose into other people's business and don't be busybodies and constantly looking at other people's affairs. I don't think he's mostly talking about exposing the darkness in other people's lives. I think he's talking about for us individually, personally, we need to walk into the light so that the darkness in us is exposed. That's where we start. We don't go looking for other people's darkness. There's plenty of darkness in us. And if we just walk into the light, the Lord will expose it. I believe that's mostly like 99.5% of what Paul is talking about here. Expose the darkness within us because we all have it and we don't want it. We don't want that darkness in us. We do want to find out what pleases the Lord, and we want to walk into that. Paul finishes with verse 14 in this passage. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. When we choose to walk in the light, when we choose to overcome this darkness and we give ourselves to Jesus, his light, he will shine on us. He becomes that light in the room that then we are now reflecting. And again, people may not see Jesus, but if they see the light of Jesus reflecting off of us, we become that light to them. We are now that light source in, again, in the same way that this camera, I am the light source for this camera. There's a light right here shining on me, bouncing off of me into the camera. I have become the light source for this camera. But I am not the light. I am just in the light in the same way. We need to reflect Jesus. We need to find out what pleases him. We need to follow his example. And these, when we really think about them, this is a tall, difficult order. It's not an easy thing here that Paul is telling us to do. It's it's very simple to just say these things, but then living it out. That's the very challenging thing. It takes intentionality. It takes us every single day speaking to the Lord, spending time in his word and speaking to the Lord about his word and about our lives and asking God every day on a regular basis, what is it that you want to do in me today? What is it that you want to do through me today? How can I grow in you today? Those are the kinds of things we need to be giving over to the Lord on a regular basis. And we will walk closer and closer with him. We will come into the light and Christ will shine on us. And that is definitely what we want. For the 10-week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time.